guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Um, I started on this menu today just because obviously nothing will have happened in between these episodes. Um, the reason I decided to leave this game um, until this episode is because you, usually I would just tack it on to the end of the last episode because there was only one, uh, if there's one or two games left, I would just generally bundle it into one big episode. Uh, but that's because now I want to make sure that I do like a squad report thing at the end of each season. So I thought that if I did uh, this episode as a live comment in this game just by itself, then we could do a squad report and the episode won't drag on for two ridiculously long. But at the same time, it means you don't get a super short episode either. Um, so I felt this was the best way of doing things. So um, there's no real need for us to look at things like um, any fixtures because we don't have any. Uh, the squad it won't be any different to what it was after the Wolves game, which we've managed to win. So that's two straight wins for us. And I tell you guys... Sheffield United, I'm pretty certain. Although they man, no. Okay, so they have, they've got a lot riding on this game. They could potentially get promoted today with a. Well, they need, really do need to win. I don't know who West Ham are playing, but we'll see in a sec. So they're going to be up for this, and I'm going to make sure that we're up for this too. We're going to really go out there and have a crack at them because why the hell not? Uh, we're just going to jump straight into match preview. See who West Ham are actually playing against. Uh, Find that set two of them. Well, four, four, two. We like playing against those. Um, I'm going to put that back on. Oh, not that one. What we're talking about? That one. Just because. Well, you saw what we were like in the second half against Wolves. I'm not saying it was all down to that, but you know, we weren't very good in the first half. Turned it back on, and we were. So, I'm not saying it's um a great idea in real life, but it seems to work for us on Football Manager. So I can't knock it. Um, we'll leave off passing to sp actually. I might leave that. I might start start that because we're away from home, and I might just see what that's like. Um, but I may turn off looking for the overlap so we don't get caught too far upfield. So we're just going to do a quick pick to move some stuff around and then change pretty much everything he just said. Now, Rygaard. Now, he's my little... little knobber. Um, bit, bit, bit bastard, but that reminds me, actually, I'm going to do that now, so I completely forgot about that. Uh, now then, where is it? There's definitely a training... Uh, no. I can do that? Sorry, I didn't notice that many before. Request training report. No. Oh, what am I doing? There is definitely a uh, training. Here we go. Uh, very suitable shooters. I'll tell you what. Um, I'd say more likely to be Maloney. Oh, for God's sake. See, this is why I... Th okay, let's try Raheem Hanley, but I imagine I'm going to get a similar kind of problem. Hmm. Oh, for the love of Christ. So, yeah, so much for getting someone with a level head to uh, tutor this little lad. He's clearly just a bit of an arsehole, um, which is a shame. Um, just to make sure. Yeah, he is actually a region. I'm not talking about a real guy here. <laughs> just to be sure. No libel. Um, not libel, slander. Um, so, again, we're going to put Danny Hollands in for Ben Close just because I just want to see if we can score from a long throw. Um, it's the last game of the season. Is there anyone I want to just give a game to today? I'll tell you what. I'm tempted to start Andy McLaughlin. Because he's got a lot of potential, and I want to just see what he's capable of. Like, let's just, well, you'll see what his stats are like when we actually go through the squad report later on. And I'm thinking Zabaras as well, uh, possibly for Taylor. Uh, is that no wait? But I will keep Taylor on the bench. I think um, probably in place of Rygaard since he's a little knobbit. Um, and Alex Bass is going to start as well. I know I said we were going to really try here, and we are. It's just I want to try and give some of these guys a little bit of a run out um, without going over the top with it. Right, so that's going to be our lineup for today. Let's get into this and see who uh, West Ham are playing against, because I'm kind of curious. I'd like to see Sheffield United go up, to be honest, because they I remember them, they were very entertaining when they were in the Premier League last time around. So it'd be good to see them. Uh, wait, no, oh, bugger. I'll look at it on the next menu. We'll find out. Don't worry, guys. I will make sure we find out who they're playing against. Or maybe we... Well, I'm pretty... Oh, maybe not. Okay. Well, I'm sure we can do our... Nah. Doesn't matter. It's, not, it's none of our concern. We'll find out at the end of the game. Let's go. See what we can do here at Bramall Lane. It'd be quite a win if we were to pick something up. It would have been nice to see Andy McLaughlin get a goal on his uh, senior debut for the club. He's got a lot of potential and probably could be the best striker at the club uh, in terms of potential-wise. So if we can get him in some games early, maybe send him out on loan next season because we've got a few. Plus, I'd like to start getting Nathan Dodd some games next year. He's going to be back from his loan spell, so he'll be ready to get stuck in, hopefully, for us. That's my plan. Anyway, Yanko here for Sheffield United. Into Garner. Back out to Taylor. I'm surprised he didn't shoot. Yanko, they are playing that ball around very nicely. Don't any penalty. And Masonda clears. That's good stuff. That's going to come straight back at us again. Maybe pass into space will be turned off in a sec because I'm just not quite feeling it at the moment. Oh, 
lovely play. Um, really nicely worked move there from Sheffield United. We managed to get away with that one a little bit. I'm thinking perhaps, though, just for now, turn that off. Um, so we can just get a little bit more possession. Just a little bit more possession. We've got decent dribblers, so when they're in possession of the ball and their passing isn't too bad either, we can kind of work it a bit more. Saiku, what are you doing? Like, I don't know why he threw that to no one. There's no one there. No one even made a run. So why was he throwing? Oh, that's a good ball for Jukovic. Jukovic, great tackle from Webster, but we could end up conceding off of the follow-up. Cole, what a block again. Hollands drops it short. And, oh, he dropped it straight to a Sheffield United player. Garbutt, Hall. Sheffield United have started very, very well. Like a dog. Oh, like a team that are challenging for promotion. And Joe Garner has made it 1-0 to United. And they've been very, very quick off the mark here against us. Extremely quick. We do need to sort of um, try and figure out a way to stop that because that is not something we want to keep happening. Uh, we managed to we made some good tackles and good clearances. Hall's ball in a gala completely unmarked, and I don't know why what one was walking backwards there instead of just running. But hey, uh, oh please, not a corner. We've actually been all right considering from corners like well done. Right, go on, break. Risonda. Oh, if you could look for the long pass, we do have it set to do that. Oh come on, support. Oh. For Damn it. We're not looking very good. If we can get to half time at 1 0, I'll start to just sort of. Uh... Oh, hello. Danny Holland's long throw. What more? Flicks it on. And it's in the net. There you go. Long throw goal. Adam Webster. They work. Long throws work. They work against you too, but I'm certain that they're a little tactic we can use in games. And I'm going to make sure that either Danny Holland starts a lot of games for us next year or we sign someone in the summer who's decent from long throws. What more with the flick on? Comes down and it comes back eventually to Adam Webster who scored a. It's a good strike. 1-1 one, one here at Bramble Lane. Massively against the run of play, but who... Oh, not... Come on. Go on, clear it. Well done. It's a decent header clear from Wallace, but hopefully the second phase won't catch us out. Whipped in. Jukovic. Garner. Great stop. And great clearance. They've created a lot of chances against us. There's no denying that. Three clear cuts. Four half chances as well. They've been fantastic. We've just had the one clear cut chance. We put it in the net, though. It's McLaughlin. Now that's poor. But Hollands will bring this down. Mantum, he's on a booking, so that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Griffiths could slide this into the channel. He goes for McLaughlin instead, who uh, manages to keep it into Griffiths. Griffiths goes through a few there. McLaughlin, all the way across to nobody. Uh, it's a poor ball, actually. Hopefully this doesn't get us caught out. His Zabaras is coming back, and that's a great ball up to Jukovic. And it's out to the left wing to Hall. They've created so much, and I assume this is going to... Well done again. Saiku. Pompey can bring it a... What was the point in passing that to Sam Mantum? Right, McLaughlin, can he win a header for us? No. Somebody closed down Cole. Anybody at all. Garner, good strike. Oh, come on. Oh, well done. <laughs> Double save from Alex Bass. He actually managed to stand up there and make the stop. And Bass again. Well done. Like, that's better. The goalie actually got up and made the save on the rebound. That's the first time I've seen that actually happen on FM this year. It's nice that that's actually possible. Um, still a one all here. I don't know how. But this is kind of what it was like in the um, game against... Oh, God, who was it against? I think it was against Crew, Where we just <laughs> got absolutely dominated for a lot of it and just nicked it, basically. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Really. But we're still at one all. We are going to have to make some little changes. I'm just going to take a little look in the instructions and see what we can do here. I think we need to close them down a little bit more, if anything. Um, they're going to come at us in the second half, so I'm going to turn Pass into Space back on again. Just going to turn that off. Just so they mm, don't lose the ball by getting caught in possession as much, maybe. See what this does for us in the second half. I just think that Sheffield United need to win this game. So they're going to be... Fl they're going to have to fly at us to try and win this. So they're going to leave gaps. And if we can exploit those gaps... Musonda, maybe a, a direct free kick. Oh my god! What a time to score our first direct free kick of the season. Charlie Musonda. Sheffield United 1, Pompey 2... And we are just, well, we're full of surprises today. Whoa, that is a long way out. But hey, Musonda with an absolutely stunning... Oh, keeper probably should have had that. I'll take it. Disappointing for Sheffield United. But there we are. We lead 2-1 at Bramwell Lane. And it's these kind of performances that make me think we can actually do something in this league. We're picking up wins in games where we're not playing all that well in. Um, what more? Musonda. Have, maybe these changes at half-time have actually made a difference for us. Musonda, Mantum, get it into the middle. There we go. Hollands. Maybe into the channel for Griffiths or out wide. Griffiths. Can he knock it in behind? McLaughlin. Wallace. Ah. Oh, I thought we were... Oh, my days. 
I thought we had an opportunity to make it three there. That would have been quite something. It's all about taking any chances, though. Oh, that probably looked a lot worse than it was. Um, my guess is it was well above Jack Watmore's head and we got caught out there. If it wasn't, I'd be annoyed, but it looked like it just looped over his head. But from there, it, from here, obviously, the bird's eye view, it just looks like he's missed it. Pretty certain that's not what happened, though. Hall's ball in and... Oh, no, wait, no, he did just miss it. Fair enough, idiot. Um, should have had someone marking at the back post, though. I don't know what happened to our defence there. Looks like we just got caught on the counter-attack, ironically. But two all here, that's not enough for them. I'm not going to start overloading them, that's for sure. Oh, God. They've had a few corners to be highlights today. Oh, fucking hell. Hmm. Well, I suppose I can't really complain. We've not been great, but corner goals... Let's see what happens here. Cole's ball in. Nobody getting to him. There's... <sighs> well. It's the last day of the season. I'm just going to make some subs and throw it on overload just to see what we can come up with. Um, McLaughlin's not been that good. I'm going to bring on Marcus for him. And I'm going to bring on Charlie Taylor for Zabaras, who's actually been woeful today, it would appear. What was not had a good game either. Um, but I'm going to keep him in there just for confidence reasons. And because he's you know, he's generally very, very solid for us. I'm doing team talks so I make substitutions now because generally the players actually respond quite well to it. Right, we are going to now uh, throw it on overload just because we're behind, we're away from him. It's the last day of the season. We may as well just see if this tactic works again. It's worked for us a couple of times this season. As you've seen in live comps, I've tried this. Um, especially against West Brom. Just one of those things. Uh, we're also going to go for encourage because why the hell not? Done so well to get ourselves in front of this game, to be honest. But look at the amount of chances Sheffield United have created. They deserve the win here. Anything we do now will be to rob them. And I really hope that we can do that. <laughs> that is basically uh, the uh, simple crux of the matter there. Anything we do now will rob them of something they deserve. But that's what we, we've we had that happen to us a few times this season. Let's see if we can do it to someone else. Wallace can have a little run at it, maybe. Whips it across all the way through. And John Marcus makes it three all in the bottom corner. That looked off. No, it's in bottom corner. What a goal. Sheffield United 3, Pompey 3. Oh, we are giving them a run for their money here. This is what I mean about us. We're scoring plenty of goals. If we could just cut down on the number we concede, I think we'd be a very, very decent side at this level. Sheffield United 3, Pompey 3. And we've created, scored those three goals with a lot less chances, which is good to see for once. Uh, let's make that change here. It'd be quite nice to take a draw here. Just finish the season off without a loss. Or, but if we got a win, that would be unbelievable. Um... But either way, I'm happy with the way we're playing in terms of attacking-wise. It's just defending that we need to really work on. Is that a long throw from Danny? Danny Holland's long throw, right? Let's see. Second phase. Is there something to come from this? Holland's into the bottom corner for Masonda. Whips it across. Cleared away. Wallace! Oh! It's hit the post. It ricocheted and hit the post. We very nearly won this at the death there. What a goal. Oh, what a moment that would have been. But again, long throws. They seem to create stuff. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Oh, well done, Alex. Alex Bass makes the save, and it's an indirect free kick. Okay. Um, I didn't see any foul there. But we'll take it, and that should be it here at Bramall Lane. And that, I believe, actually is it. No, not quite. This should do it. There we go. Sheffield United 3, Portsmouth 3. Well done, guys. Um, they had a lot of chances in that game and really should have done better with them. We made the most of what we had for once and got ourselves a decent point. And again, it just comes down to us being able to just tighten up at the back a little bit. If we can tighten up at the back, we will be superb next season. So if you've got any ideas of ways that we can keep our attacking impetus, so like that front eye, I'm not changing it because we're scoring goals. What can we do at the back to make ourselves tighter? Do we need to get a defensive midfielder, but would that affect our ability to control the game in the midfield? Let me know what you think. So there we have it. Uh, we'll go to the other menu actually and have a look at this properly rather than looking at this mini menu here. Oh, and Bradford have been relegated. That sucks for them, actually. They were doing quite well at one point this year. That's very strange. They must have really slipped off the pace. Um, so there we go. We've gone 15th in the end. And I don't think that's bad for our first season at this level. We finished 13 points clear of the relegation zone. And only 9 points off the playoffs. So we're actually closer to the playoffs than we were to the relegation places. So I can't really fault them for that. But 74 goals scored is fairly damn good. Uh, we conceded 77, though. And that's... That's the area that needs to be improved. If we can cut down that next year, I'll be very, very happy with us. Uh, so Watford have gone down. Blackburn are down, as are Bradford. And Huddersfield, really good little run towards the end of the season, has saved their butts, basically. 
But there you go. So I may have a look at David Nugent. I may not do. It just, just depends. I'm probably going to do a bit more scouting than that. So I may be able to find someone better. It's just I'm looking at his stats for this season in this league in a team that have not been playing very well, clearly. Um, and he scored 29 goals for them. So that's pretty damn impressive. Sheffield United do go up regardless of the result against us because West Ham looked like they lost, in fact. Aston Villa, oh, that's such a shame for Crew. They were in fourth place at one point and they've actually ended up dropping out of the playoffs entirely on goal difference uh, as a result of losing 4-0 at Aston Villa. You can't really... Uh... Oh, wow. So as a result of... Aston Villa were three points behind Crew going into that game and... had a worse goal difference but by beating crew 4-0 they actually managed to snap oh that's such a sh wow that would have been a hell of a game to watch um right so let's take a look at the squad and let's do a little little intimacy squad report here so uh we're just going to start with uh danny hollands and go around and we're going to do squad reports for all three teams that we've got just so you can have a little look so danny hollands crossing is going up his marking is also going up anticipation concentration leadership positioning that's good vision he's still growing quite well considering i think he's 27 now and he's not worth a great deal but i just think he's a good player agility up as well balance and stamina down i guess that's age more than anything dominic hyam I think we need to get him some more game time in order to get him to develop a bit more. It's just the problem is I brought him in as a sort of um, replacement for when Webster and Watmore inevitably got injured. And they actually haven't got injured at all, really, this season. Um, so he's not really got as much game time as I would have expected. I bought him expecting those massive amount of injuries and they just haven't happened. Well, they have, but not in those positions, which is a shame. Paul Jones, pretty much everything is declining for him, and that is because he is slightly aging now, and that is why, eventually, I think next season, Alex Bass is almost certainly to be our first-choice goalkeeper, and that's good because he's a good player. Sam Mantum, um, not really changing. He's getting many, many games, but he's sort of reaching a point now where he's sort of reached his peak kind of thing, and he's going to start to decline. Um, so maybe even want to look at moving on. I don't I don't know. Um, since he's reached his peak, and it might be the most we'd ever be able to get for him. Plus, his contract's up at the end of next year. I'm just trying to think about this. John Marcus. Um, not really any big changes for him either. Let me just see if I can get a... Attribute analysis? No. I want to see if we can get a better... Like season stats. That's better. That's something I would like to be able to see more of. Yeah. Let me just see if I got any better um no, that'll do right so yeah he's got he's not played that many well he's got nine goals in 14 starts but it's tw mostly he's been mostly used off the bench basically um so anyway moving along annie mclaughlin youngster but he has his long shots his long throws technique anticipation composure off the ball agility pace strength is really going up which is good he needs that um i think he's going to be a quality quality player just not yet his work rate is high and his determination is very high which apparently is very important so that will help us as well let's just see he's mm, he's a big strong lad already considering his age and he's only getting better in that so we may have to I don't know how good he is at the other sort of defensive those kind of roles we play so if he does start to get a lot better and starts to get game time we may have to sort of move things around a little bit for him that's not what I wanted at all um, right Brennan Maloney unfortunately he is starting to decline now declining quite early as well his first touch has gone up but his dribbling and heading have declined he's made 33 appearances for us this year though so still pretty good that picture is not a very flattering picture of him um, at all it looks like he's trying to catch flies Charlie Musonda obviously has been superb. Probably one of our best players this season. Acceleration up, strength up to leadership, vision, technique, tackling, passing, marking, long shots, heading, and finishing all up. If his finishing got better, he could be a seriously good player. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Partington has pretty much stayed the same. He is the club captain, but I think next year the club captain role will probably be moving on a little bit. Maybe the likes of Watmore or Wallace could take that. Uh, Raka Wanwe. I really want to get him some more game time and I think alone might be a good move for him because he's not quite good enough to be playing week in week out but at the same time I don't really want to lose him because he's got mm, we'll see but no real big changes for him Ryan Smith of course the Chelsea lad lots of his corners are up first touch heading long shots passing technique anticipation bravery leadership off the ball vision work rate balance pace and strength all going up He's not been superb for us this year, I, I must say. Like, he had that one really good game against Middlesbrough, but I, I just don't know. There's some things about his game that I'm not particularly uh, enthused with, but 17 finishing is quality. Uh, Tom Saiku, I don't understand that. Like, he's actually started playing for us really, really well. He's, and he's only 22, and yet crossing, finishing is one. Long shots, long throws, penalty... 
loads of stuff have gone down, and I'm really confused as to why that is. Um, he's got decent morale. Um, odd. Lazy, perhaps? I, I don't know. Stamina's gone up, though, and his anticipation and concentration, ironically. That's a strange one. Charlie Taylor. Uh, he's only been at the club for a few months, but he's already started to really improve. Long throws up, composure, concentration, decisions, teamwork, vision, work rate, balance, and strength all going up for the young lad. I think he's going to be good. Oh, here we go. Jed Wallace. So, corners up, dribbling up, first touch up, penalty taking could do a bit, a bit better as well, which is good. Anticipation, concentration, decisions. His determination is huge, which is superb. Positioning and teamwork, too, he really could do with improving. Natural fitness and pace are also up. He's had another superb season, so very, very happy with him. Probably my most expensive player, I'd have to say. Adam Webster. Um... Flair has gone up slightly, interestingly, and his stamina as well, but he's played well, just as well because he's played 41 ga uh, 43 games for us from the start, so surprised he's not gone up more, but hmm, we'll have to see about that. Maybe look at his training. Jack Watmore, 1.6 million he's worth, actually, so yeah. Corners dribbling are up. Vision is up as well, as is his stamina. His leadership isn't bad either, so maybe that's one thing he can captain soon uh, if he can improve that. Here he is at Stannis Baratheon. Zzz, dribbling goes up. His first touch is up to, and his passing decisions and positioning. And I noticed that a lot of these are ones he's weak in, so that's good. He's really improving in position in areas that he is uh, he is unhappy, but that's just because he wants to be playing every single game, and he's a backup player. And I can't be doing that because we've got at least two players that are better than him in that position. So I will be loaning him out uh, probably next season. Oh, buggery. Uh, next, Alex Bass. It's good to see. He's played 22 games for us this year, so that's, that's good. Um... Lots of stuff has gone up. Aerial ability, command of box, communication, free kick taking, ironically. Uh, handling, kicking, one-on-ones, reflexes, throwing, composure, concentration, leadership, positioning, work rate, pace, interestingly as well. Stamina, jumping reach, agility, and acceleration. So, yeah, I think you could do with getting a bit more acceleration and pace, actually, if he's going to play sweeper keeper for us. But apparently that's his best role, so hmm? have at it, mate. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with Alex Bass there as well. Shaquille Coulthurst. I just, yeah, I think he's going to be moved on in the summer as well. We can get a bit of money for him, um, and I intend to do exactly that. Eccleston may also leave. I don't know. Like, I think we can do better, and I'd like to free up free up the wages that he's being paid in order to facilitate a move for someone like that. Fogden, um, again, same kind of problem. I just don't think he's good enough for us anymore. Get him off the wage bill too. Gary Gardner is in a very similar boat, although he does have another year in his contract. I'd like to try and get rid of him in the summer too if I can, because he's not going anywhere and he gets injured constantly. Kieran Griffiths. This is a lad I am very, very pleased about. Corners up, finishing, heading, long shots, long throws, marking, passing. You can see it yourself. Pretty much everything of his has gone up, and that is a lovely old job. I'm very, very pleased with him, and he's just becoming a superb player for us. Next year, I think he could really start to improve. Uh, Raheem Hanley. Um, he's had quite a few improvements, despite not getting maybe as much game time in the second half of the year, but he's still done very, very well. Uh, dribbling up, first touch, long shots too. His anticipation and concentration also going up. Danny Hollands. Uh, oh, no, we already looked at him, didn't we? So there we go. That's our first team score. We'll take a little look at the under-21s. Um... We'll skip anyone that we've already talked about. So, Gary Gardner, right? Kieran Griffiths. Ray Manley. Uh, God's sake. A problem, the reason these all appear in here is because I have a lot of them set to play under 21 games when there's... Um, this is just everyone now. Can it not... Can I not cycle through under 21s? Well, that's a little bit annoying, but... You can see just look. I mean, I did the episode a little while ago where we looked at their potential. I'll be moving some of these guys into the first team squad anyway, so you can see some of their stats soon as well. So, guys, that is the end of the season and the end of the episode. Join us next uh, in the next episode where we will be. Well, I'll be talking you through our summer transfers, what we've had ins and outs, what we've had money wise, the sort of general goings on at the club over the summer, as well as uh, obviously pre season. We will also be looking at our. First game of the season. Don't know who it's against, but we will be live coming that, of course. So there we have it. Uh, we will be doing that very soon. So yeah, if you have any suggestions, like I was talking about there, drop them in this episode. I will try to get them um, 
put in it as soon as I can. But again, because of work, I've had to pre-record a lot of episodes and it's a shame. And I really don't want to be able to do that, uh, to have to do that. I'd much rather be recording episodes for like, say it was Monday. I'd like to be recording an episode for Monday, sorry, on for Tuesday on Monday. That way I can take it into account. But at the moment, I just cannot do that. Um, maybe when, if I can get a new computer before I finish this job, then maybe I can. But I, I just don't think that's going to be the case. So I'm trying my best to make sure that we don't lose any days of episodes still. Though, so you get your two episodes every single day. That's the plan. So there we go, guys. Um, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more ports with Anderson Pally in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.